Fix-It Farmer and today it is a Fix-It Day. It is because we've got this beautiful little hay bob 300 series try again 300 series hay bob in the workshop which i bought at a previous auction that you would have seen done a video on that where we went and saw the 8340 and the sammy 65 yeah 65 yeah 65 so that was where i bought this machine this hay bob from now today as it's peeing down the rain again and we just had storm i called it bert no it's called dave yesterday but it's storm bert isn't it so know. max you know, you were beating yesterday weren't you yeah you got very i bad. knew about the rain then that's for sure so today I'm going to show you what we need to do to service this and how it all works and what isn't working and teach Max how it all works and show him how to repair everything and hopefully we'll possibly learn a bit together and at the end of it we'll have a hay bob that works. Hey. Fingers crossed. So ready to do? Yeah. Cool. Let's get the old um, skid steer out of the way and put it on the ground. So first of all Max is asking what this rope does. And that is the rope that goes to the back of your cab of the tractor. So you can pull this up and pull it out with transport. So that is in transport to stop it moving around when it's behind the tractor. You go to Maxi, pull it over, that's it. And then that then allows the whole tether to come back around like that. So it's sort of slightly offset on there. Now, the problems we've got with this is... The same as most hay bobs. Same as most hay bobs, exactly that, Max. So this one here is seized. So that doesn't move. That's supposed to be able to pivot on there. Slight little bend, hopefully that is all it is. But a WD-40. Yeah, it will definitely need a lot of that. Now these are C's, but it is in the middle hole. So you've got different heights. So now ideally, I believe, if I remember rightly, the bottom hole is for rowing up and the top hole is for tedding. And the middle hole is where everybody leaves it and they seize up. But I'd like that moving again because it does a better job. That sort of does a 60% job. That's sort of about an 80% job. So I'd like to be able to move them and I'll explain my percentages in a little while. Freebie pin. Freebie pin? Yep. Oh, very nice. Now, the other job is, right, Maxie, fold down one of these tines. There we go. There we go. Now, they are sticking down. Now, they shouldn't stick down. There we go. There we go. That's what it's meant to do. There we go. Spring back up. But this one isn't. Now, what happens is these are generally well greased here, but they haven't been for a while. So they're just sort of starting to seize up and they're not really moving within their plastic bushings. Oh, I think we need the Milwaukee grease gun over there for that. You think so? I think you better get them freed up with a bit of WD first and then we'll grease them all afterwards. So I need to make them think. Now, the best thing about this is that all the tines are complete. Every single one's got a tine. Now, a hay bob, isn't the best and i'll explain a little bit more about them in the bit for tedding or for rowing up but it does do both jobs now if you have got a tine that's missing on most hay turners it's not the end of the world but with a hay bob you want every single tine present and correct for it to do a half decent job now the nightmare of these is that sometimes these springs are missing and then you've got to replace these springs or the springs are broke and they don't do anything so i'm hoping we haven't got any broken springs but we'll find out out and then you've got to replace the springs, which is a bit of a ball job with these plastic bushes that are in here. And we'll get to that in a second. So Maxie's first job is going to be to free up all of them, dude, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Yes. And then you've got your gates there, look, so they fold back out round. And then that's it. So you can put it, if you pull them in tight, you've got it for rowing up. Not mm -hmm. quite that tight. You want to come back out to probably middle, middle hole there for rowing up. There we go. That's it. And then do the same the other side. That's the one. Cool, so that's your rowing up, so then that puts it all into a row, and then you can put it right out onto this one here, Monk, onto here, onto the wide ones, or something will take the gates completely off for tedding, and then that will then allow you to ted the grass, and then the grass will go back out the back and spread out. So going back to basics, if you don't know what a hay bob is, a hay bob is for design for when you're haymaking, so when you cut the grass in the summer, and then you want to head it or turn it, turn the grass. So instead of it being in rows, you then spread the grass out into a sort of a, to make it as flat and as smooth as possible. So it's a very thin layer of grass. So allowing the grass to dry to be able to turn it into hay. Because hay wants to be under, if I remember rightly, under 14% moisture. So you've got to keep tedding it until it's dry and then you can row it up to bale it. Now rowing up, you can do with this one, as I just said. So you can change the gates around and the settings 
so that you can put it back into rows. The idea of then putting it back into rows is so that the baler can then go up through and pick up all the grass um, and put it into bales. So that is what this machine does. Now, hay bobs are generally love hate. People either love them or they hate them. And they've got their place in the market because they are sort of a cheap alternative to more cost-effective options, uh, more expensive options. So with this being able to ted and row up the grass, it is just a nice sort of basic machine that will do a job. Now, anyone who's made hay before knows that tedding with a hay bob, you'll end up still pulling up a green bit three days into tedding. So they're not the best for tedding, but for rowing up on a small old, you know, classic tractor or a vintage tractor, then they are brilliant because... Yeah, so you can put this behind a 135, for instance, or a 35, and it would do a fantastic job because it's not heavy, it's not, you know, it doesn't stick out the back of the tractor too far, and you utilise those older tractors with them, which I quite like. Or you could put it on a bigger tractor if you need to, because it's cap 2 linkage on there, Max, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because Alex went and picked it up for me with the Sammy, because I just didn't have time. I'd like to have done that and film that. But, um, yeah, right, let's have a crack on and do a little bit more to it. Now, Max has just gone to the other workshop to try and find some WD and some lubricant and stuff. Now, I said about between tedding and rowing up. Now, this is in the tedding function when that is out there. Now, in a minute, I'll get Max to film me, and I'll show you how to put that into a different hole for rowing up. Right, so I've been working on these times. They're already a bit better, because they're all... Really bouncing back up. Good job, dude. Do you want to try and pull them out the holes then? Yeah. Try and get them freed up, see if you can do that. You have to wiggle, sort of pull and wiggle at the same time. Which isn't the easiest to do, I'll be honest, especially when it's not hitched up to the track with the PTO to sort of jam it in gear. That's it. Keep, keep moving. And the more you move them, the better it'll be anyway for when I come to do it. Right, so I've managed to get this pin out of here on both sides. That's good. And now we'll need to sort of block up the bobbins on the bottom to be able to bang them down then hopefully the hard bit is banging them back up again because obviously you've got a wheel in the way now i paid a little over 500 pounds for this hay bob which is a pretty good buy but if those shafts were free and easily working i would easily put an extra 300 quid on this hay bob in a heartbeat because that's the biggest thing that fails on these so if you're looking at buying one make sure you check to see if those shafts are seized now is the hard bit to unseize them Right, so I've taken the gate off the other side. I'm going to take the gate off this side. It's got a... You're going to place these as sir clips. So they've got a little spring clip in there. Look. Get them around get that one off. And then you can fold it around this side here. And then you can lift it up. And then you can get it out that way. And then in there, you'll have a little plastic push. There, look. there we go. And a spring in, underneath. Just remember which way your gates go around, though, because there's a left and a right. That's the smooth bit on the inside, so you know that's coming out. If you flat there on the side to try and direct your grass back this way, that way, it just wouldn't flow very well. So that's your right hand gate. Right, so we jacked up this side to see if we can hit this bit down. <laughs> it's actually moving. That is very good news. I'm very happy with that. Now, how do we hit it back up? That is the, that is, ah, oh, yes, mate, yes. That's what we wanted. It spins as well, it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> that is bloody good news. Right, we've got it free and we've greased up this, greased up this shaft in the bottom. Now, looking under there, dude. I'd like to have had copper slip, but I haven't got any, so lithium grease it is. But look at that, it's not ideal. Perfect. <laughs> right, now we need to grease the shaft at the top now. So top. Use the kink in the wheel to hold it there. There we go. Got the Milwaukee M18 grease gun. Love that thing. Apart from the noise. It's probably, yeah, one more little squirt there. That'll do probably. Yeah, ideal. Proper. Lovely. Let's wipe that in around that. Right, so we're going to take the wire wheel to the pin to clean it up. Oh, 
sucker pin I just cleaned up and that's what it would have looked like before but that one was actually worse. Now as you can see there's a little roll pin in there so when this goes in here that goes in there and then that roll pin gets knocked in so you can slot it back through that slot. So I'm just going to knock that roll pin out and then when we put it back in we can add in a new roll pin. So I've just got a set of punches, have a punch and then drive that down through there with the beautiful Milwaukee four pound lump hammer. Love it, liking it. I can't find my three pounds this morning, so I've had to go and get the brand new four pound out. Right, let's see if I can find some roll pins. Which, ah, hello. They look like roll pins to me. That's a bit of a, right on the top, perfect. Right, so Max is gonna have a good putting the roll pin in. Got a long nose pair of pliers. Oh. I think it's gone. <laughs> Do we just start it? Yeah. Yeah. I've now got the, I've started. I'll give it a good hit. That's it, gone. Gone. Be quite tight. Doesn't need to go right the way in, just so it's enough to stop it going forward and back, really. Now we've got the pin in, should all work. Gonna go down to that hole, he says. There we go, in there, around, out, middle hole, top hole. Right, let's repeat the process on the other side. Right now I've put some oil on, they should move across. There we go, look at that. That's what it should do. So what that, setting's that? So that's in tedding. That's in rowing up, I think. Mm -hmm. I'd have to check the old book and manual somewhere, but I think that's what it was. And then you go around and do them all like that, look. Pull them out, twist them around. And then we can get to the and grease all these now, Maxie. Yep. Get them all greased up. Cool. So good news is that that bobbin is all sorted. So we've gone all the way around, grease up all of the springs. So some people might say, oh, you don't want to put grease on hay bob springs because all the hay dust will stick to them. Well, if you don't, they seize up. So it's a bit of a catch 22, fair enough, I get it. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Now, very happy that that middle pin unseizes is easy. We're now gonna crack on with this one. So do you reckon a bit of a time-lapse, Max? Yeah, time lapse rather than doing individual stuff. And then we've just got to sort out the gates. So we're gaining, we are gaining. So Max has just kindly gone to go and get a tripod so we can time lapse this bit. Now, this is a 300 series Hay Bob, which is probably one of the most popular on the market. Now, I used to have a 200 series, which is like the original Hay Bob. Now, the easiest way to tell the difference between the two is, well, one, generally 300's got more paint on it than a 200. 200 is generally browner, but that's not necessarily the case is that the tires on a 300 are probably about three inches wider. The 200 series had a much narrower wheel, so that's one thing to bear in mind. Now, they also make a 360 hay bob, or did make a 360 hay bob, and a 380, which were telescopic, so they were wider. So if you were like, rather than going behind a conventional baler like we would, put them behind a round baler or a square baler, you could make a bigger swath with those because you could actually control how wide the width of your row was going to be. But they were generally used more for rowing up than they were for tedding. So let's time lapse that other bobby. Don't want to waste time. I'll never be this young. I'll never be this young again. Don't want to chase heights when I'm too worn out. So I, I'm never coming down, never coming down, never coming down again. I was born to be this high, born to be this high, born to be this high, my friend. So Max is just looking for the grease nipple in the UJ on the PTO shaft. So it should be in one of those holes there somewhere, mate. Can you see it? Matey? Showing it. I'll let you keep looking. What'd you make of the wall? Good old Wally. I just watched the time lapse back and saw you there darting all over the place, boy. High five. Do a high five? Yeah, I'll do. High five, Maxi. Boom. Another heavily wearing part on hay bobs is the bottom of the gate there. See, that's where they're dragging on the ground around the field. That's the first thing that will generally go on a hay bob now. A bit of flat iron along there, welded in, will be proper. And the same on that one. But I'm gonna leave that for Mike because I can't seem to find my welding mask. I've used it the other day on the gates and now I can't find it. Maxie, you've got some magic elixir in your hand, haven't you? Yeah, diesel oh. and oil. Yeah, it is. 
Let's see what it does. Does it come out? Oh, it's going to transform it. That's a bit thick, mate. Oh. <laughs> Transformed our bay up as when we put it back up Did. in the shed after haymaking, we sprayed it all. Fan load now, mate. There we go. So one hay bob complete. Well, apart from Mike having to weld up those two bottoms of those gates, which he'll probably do next week when he's back. But very happy. We're just running some diesel and oil over the metalwork just to preserve it a little bit longer. Once that's drip dried, then we can then clean up the floor and everything with the cat litter and stuff to make sure that's all clean. And we then got one decent hay bob, which I'm very, very happy with. Now, the only thing to note is the poly bushes in probably about four of where the springs go could do with replacing. They're just getting a little bit tight and a little bit worn inside. Now, I don't know why when Hey Bob made these, I say Hey Bob, Coverland and Vicon. Now it does say Coverland on that side and it says Vicon 300 on the other. I'm not exactly sure what the link was, probably one made them for the other. Why they didn't just give us a little bit more tolerances on those holes so they weren't quite so awkward, but they are what they are. Now, I'm very happy that those middle height adjusters freed up so easily because they looked like they were solid. So very happy with that. The far one was harder than this one, but I can't complain. They could have been a lot worse. So yeah, we now have a hay bob. So next year we'll at least do one video with this, probably with the 135 in front of it, tedding or rowing up or both or whatever we do because we have got other videos on Machinery Nation to do with another brand of machinery for next year for haymaking. Now, this will be on this channel where we use this one. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's all good. And just to note, the white ones are probably still original hay bob times from when it is new, I think. But let me know in the comments what you think of this, if you like hay bobs, whether you don't, and whether they are still original times, if you know more about this than I do, which is probable. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Cheerio. Bye. Bye.